Hey, it's Ethan from Zimmer Labs, and today's video is on what I like to call the Multimaster lightsaber. It's a new idea. Um, it spawned from something a lot of you guys probably remember, which was the um, Master Replicas lightsaber construction kit. Something that came out, oh gosh, probably over a decade ago, 12 to 15 years ago. Um, let me see here. This guy on the monitor screen. The idea was good. The idea was here's a, here's one lightsaber you can buy that you can make a bunch of lightsabers out of the same out of just one. So that way if you are going out in a Sith costume or you're going to a convention and you want to be Luke Skywalker or you know Obi-Wan, you can kind of mix and match the parts and create whatever lightsaber you need for that day out of just the one. And the idea is good. The idea was really good. Um, but at the, at the same time, the execution was terrible. It didn't, didn't look good. None of the sabers looked good. It wasn't like, here's one great looking lightsaber or here's, you know, buy all of them, get four great looking lightsabers, you get one of them, and none of them looked real good, but they are all kind of reminiscent of the idea. Um, but generally speaking, you know, you got a bunch of parts, you could mix and match them, you know, start with the electronics inside some really simple chassis, and slide it up into the tube, and then put on the Obi-Wan emitter, or you could put on the Return of the Jedi emitter, or you could put on the Vader emitter, and then, you know, put on the matching control box. Here's the Return of the Jedi one, here's, here's the Obi-Wan one, here's an Anakin one. You know, but at the end of the day, you can't really make any of those lightsabers look good if, if what you're starting with is something that's capable of making all of them because they really don't look alike at the end of the day. Um, but the idea was good, the idea was sound, and now that we've got, you know, 12 years down the road and all sorts of technological improvements, um, it's something that I wanted to revisit, and um, the Profi board, the open source lightsaber software, and the whole community of people working on it is such an incredible tool that it really opens the door to lots of creative possibilities. Um, I think up to now, I think there are two real main reasons why the Profi board is so excellent. Um, the first one being Smooth Swing, because it's such a really well done effect and it's so realistic when you add it to your lightsaber that it, you know the sound and motion really is way beyond anything else. Um, but then the other thing that's really terrific about the Profi board is the creativity and different variety of effects you can make visually for the blades. And you can use the style editor that Frederick created, or you can just do it yourself in your head. But you can come up with crazy, crazy, crazy combinations of things to make a blade do anything you want. So it's not like I want a red, a red blade with the white flash on clash or I want a blue blade with a yellow flash on clash. No, you can do anything. You can mix and match. You can have blaster blocks that are animated that are only in certain sections. You can have blade lockups that are only in certain sections and animated and changed depending on, you know, you can make them random, whatever. But the idea is, is great because you can just really pour your creativity in. But something else that I've alluded to in a lot of my videos is that the thing that really makes the Profi board amazing is that you can do anything with it. It's it's not it's an open-ended design. It's not a closed-ended design in that you're not limited by what the creator of the board had as a vision. You can take the board, take the lightsaber software, and if you know Arduino and you understand the operating system, you can change it because it's open source, you can get in there, you can rewrite it, you can make it do anything. I mean, you could take a lightsaber and add an infrared sensor and turn it into a remote control for your TV if you wanted to. 
or make it a timer or Bluetooth it to connect to your refrigerator. I mean, there really is no limit to all the things you can do with the Profi board based lightsaber besides only real limits are the hardware and the capabilities of the microprocessor. I mean, you can't have it control your home security system and your home cameras because it doesn't have enough RAM and the microprocessor probably isn't powerful enough to do that. But anything within reason that the hardware on the board is capable of doing, you can program it to do it. And uh, the, the whole point of that is it's hard to really get across in that I say that. I say, you you know, the capabilities of the profit board are, are, are endless. You can make it do whatever you want. But what does that mean? What does that mean in real life application? Well, here's a good example. I wanted to do kind of my spin on the lightsaber construction kit. And I thought, okay, well, we can do that. Um, the profit board, I can install into a lightsaber, but then I can change the config file, change the source code, whatever, and tell it that it's supposed to be a Darth Vader lightsaber, but only when it's in a Darth Vader hilt. And when I put it into a graphics hilt, it's supposed to be a graphics lightsaber. And then when I take it out and I put it into a Vader Return of the Jedi saber, the DV6, it's supposed to be that one. And that's actually something we can do. So I thought about it for a while and then made a plan and set to it and this is this is what we came up with it's not finished because I think that really I'm just kind of scratching the tip of the iceberg here with this um, but it's finished enough that I can show you guys you guys can check it out and I could do a video on it and uh, I think hopefully the idea will be pretty clear so we'll start here with this this is a Corbanth MPP 2.0 Darth Vader Empire Strikes Back lightsaber, although it's a little bit of a modge podge, hodgepodge, whatever, because it's got the wiring from Empire Strikes Back with the clamp from A New Hope. It's this is just how I like it. This is my personal lightsaber. Um, this hilt is, anyways. And I really like the exposed wires, and I really like the actual lever on the clamp, so that's why it's kind of a mix of the two. But at any rate. Corbanth MPP 2.0 um, activation button here. I put the auxiliary button here, little small guy, and got a nice NeoPixel blade plug in it that's screen accurate from Custom Saber Shop. And then what I did was I got the Goth Three Designs Master Chassis for the Graflex, and just did a little bit of minor modification to it so that it fits in this hilt instead of the Graflex, um, which is not terribly difficult. But this is a beautiful hilt. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's got a ton of room to add um, color cycle pixels inside of it. All the windows in this thing are fully loaded with pixels all the way around, kind of giving that turbine effect that I like so much. Um, you can add additional metal geometric details to it, like I did here. Um, it's got a really nice crystal chamber on it. And the best part about this is that, aesthetically, it really does lend itself to a lot of different lightsabers. Like, this doesn't look out of place inside of the Vader hilt. It looks kind of dark and grungy and... Sith-like, um, the stainless steel and the semi-corroded radiator heat sink here. Um, but at the same time, if you put it in a uh, graphics, it still looks good too. It's it's a pretty universal design. Um, but that's so that was kind of that was kind of lucky. Um, but at any rate, so let me put the blade in real quick. I'll just run you guys through this one. This is blade retention over here because really it's the only screw or bolt or anything that's available that will actually work for it. If you look in there, you'll see it's a stock Custom Works onboard pixel blade connector. 
um, with a semi-frosted piece of poly to diffuse the light. 7 8 inch NeoPixel blade. Just lock it in real quick for you guys. So the first blade is red, obviously, because it's a Vader Saber. Next blade is a blood orange pulsing blade. The turbine spinning up to the same. Well, actually, it's kind of a yellow turbine. This is a dark orange blade. This guy is a red spark tip, I believe. is the uh, turbine blade. It's a color cycle blade done in dark orange and orange red and some yellow with some brownian, um, brownian pixelation. And it actually looks a lot better than that usually. Yeah, oh, that's better. It's much more smooth. It's just a really fast speed color cycle. Here's a traditional standard speed, slow ramping color cycle blade. Fire blade. This is um, Tom Tillman's um, I call it the Stress Fire Blade. It's not the name he gave it, but it's Tom Tillman's Kylo Ren Blade, uh, aka Megtooth Sith. Um, this is one of my favorite Kylo Blades. It's, it's really a good, unstable, pixely, flickering, kind of distressed red blade. I think this one is a Gradient Blade. Strobe blade, that's the POV, and then you got your battery indicator, and then back to the beginning. So, awesome. You've got a nice, solid, smooth swing, profi board Neo Pixel blade with a sweet crystal chamber reveal. Um, but, here's where it really gets good. Let's pull the blade out real quick, and let's go ahead and just pull the chassis out as well. Now, the chassis has been a bit, like I said, it's been a bit customized. I used a nice aluminum um, LED heat sink here as a housing for the, uh, for the blade connector. Uh, mounted it right on the end of this battery compartment. I put a one of those new Wow Sound 28 millimeter premium speakers in here. And we've got the male um, header pin connector that mates with the female end in here that is the button connections so that way you can take the chassis out fully removable uh, but still have the buttons work and then just a little extra um, black plastic part that I fabricated myself just cutting that out of some other black plastic pipe to kind of cover up that hole that is just part of this chassis uh, down on the end recharge port main power switch USB and SD card access and now here's the cool part I take my trusty Graflex I take this same exact chassis and just line it up make sure to line up the pins I'm gonna grab a hex key to Lock the chassis in place. That's important, obviously. And make sure that the blade doesn't push it back out when you insert the blade in. And we just turn it back on. And it's a completely different lightsaber now.
pretty cool, huh? Got a whole new set of sound fonts, a whole new blade array, um, and strictly because, just because the chassis is now in this hilt, as opposed to the Vader hilt, it's completely different, um, the whole programming scheme that it's running. Pull up the blade connector, or the uh, blade plug real quick. This is actually um, a stainless steel Graflex. This is one of the Maker Prop Studios stainless steel runs that uh, that was done, in, I don't know, maybe a year back. I don't know if they're making any more of these. They're super limited, um, but I, I personally really like them. I know stainless steel is not what the Graflex um, should be made of if you're doing a replica, but it's actually a really nice, sturdy, cool version of it. Um, it looks a little bit different in person. And then it's got some weathered grips on it. It's not uh, standard grips at all, but um, next up, main activation button here. Slide switch right here to um, toggle your blades. This is a blue cyan audio flicker blade. It's a... This is a, the... Fast turbine color cycle blade done in blue and cyan, I think. Standard blue color cycle blade. This is a really fast pulsing kind of distressed um, RGB electricity blade. Strobe, POV, battery indicator, back to the beginning, the green blade because we skipped it. This is actually supposed to be magenta, but evidently my, uh, my programming is a little off. I have to tweak that. This is the audio flicker blade that we already saw, and the turbine blade again. So, not as many blades on this guy as is going to have on there when it's fully finished. Like I said, this guy isn't 100% done, but good enough that I can kind of show you guys the concept so you can see how everything works. Um, inside here, when you fire it up, the crystal chamber works, and it's also mimicking the blade with a whole new set of um, color schemes and presets to go with the different set of sound fonts. And now that's cool. But here's the other cool part. Let's say now you want to have your DV6 with you because you're going to Comic Con or Star Wars Celebration or something, and the uh, Graflex is just not going to work with your costume or your, your buddy's costume or something like that. Once again, Simply pull this chassis out, break out your DV6, insert carefully and mate the connectors. Now we're in a DV6. We've got the whole different set of presets, sound fonts, and everything once again. And as simple as that, you now have three different fully loaded, fully functional 
Profi board, smooth swing, NeoPixel lightsabers, all with different blades, all with different sound fonts, just by pulling the chassis out of one and sliding it into the next. Pull the blade plug out real quick. This is just something I homemade on the fly. Um, typically I would go with the custom saber shop version of that blade plug, but I didn't have any in hand, on hand that is, and I needed to have one for the video, so I made that one up real quick. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Um, as I said, this isn't a wholly 100% finished um, lightsaber, but the concept is something I wanted to kind of show everybody and to get out there for people's opinions. Um, this is not perfect for everybody. This is, this is something for somebody who doesn't want to have a collection you know, like most people, most collectors, lightsaber guys, they collect them and want to have all the different characters, uh, you know, th that they're into. And this may not be for that person. This is more for somebody who's only going to have one. Uh, but they want to have one that's really nice. They want to have all the bells and whistles. They want to have it tricked out. But they want to be able to make it into different sabers because they like to go to cons or like to cosplay or they like to duel or whatever and they want to have different sabers to duel with different ones to wear with different costumes what, what or whatever and this enables you to do that just by just by buying the one um, while at the same time still getting all the effects that you want all the bells and whistles having one that really performs well got a good battery got good sound got smooth swing got whatever blades you want whatever animations you want whatever sound fonts you want um, I guess that's, yeah, so that's about it. Um, thank you guys, as always, for watching, and you guys let me know what you think.